Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta. And today I will introduce the concept of structural equation modeling. Structural equation modeling is a statistical technique used to analyze complex relationships between variables and to test and refine the theoretical models. It provides a framework for representing and testing the causal relationship among latent variables and the observed variables. The history of causality model weighs back to 1896, the year in which the linear regression model was developed by Carl Pearson. In 1904 to 1927, factor analysis was developed by Charles Spearman. In 1940, Dean Lawley and Thurston came with the factor techniques. In 1955 to 1965, during 1955 to 1965, the confirmatory factor analysis was developed by Harvey. Anderson and Ruby. During the time period 1918 to 1960, the path models were developed by Swell Wright. Now, from 1973 to 1994, the structural equation modeling technique was developed by Carl Joska. It combines both path models and confirmatory factor models to incorporate both latent and the observed variables. The difference between SAM and regression analysis is regression analysis is used to examine the relationship between the dependent variable and one or more independent variables, while a structural modeling is a more comprehensive approach that analyzes the complex relationship between multiple variables, including the latent constructs. Regression focuses on estimating parameters to quantify the relationship, while SAM model models the relationship through a system of equations considering both observed and the latent variables. Regression assumes a specific functional form and independence between the variables, while SAM incorporates the various assumptions and covariance structures. Regression is often used for prediction, while SAM provides the information on relationship and the overall model fit. Assumptions of SAM The first assumption is the multivariate normal distribution. The maximum likelihood technique is used and assumed for the multivariate normal distribution. Small changes in multivariate normality can lead to a large difference in the chi-square test. So it is essential that you should have the multivariate normality. Linearity Endogenous variables and exogenous variables should have a linear relationship among them. There should not be any outlier present in your data. It affects the model significance and hence it is necessary that to ensure that the data is not having any outlier. The sequence is to be maintained. Sequence here means the cause and effect. The cause should occur before the event. Endogenous and exogenous variables should have an effect in cause relationship. There should not be any non-spurious relationship. Covariance observed should be correct between the constructs. Model identification. In SEM, under-identified models are not being considered and the equations should be greater than the estimated models. In our upcoming videos, I will explain what is the concept of under-identified model, just-identified model and the over-identified model. Sample size. As a rule of thumb, sample size is generally 20 times more than the indicator. For instance, mostly researcher prefers 150 to 300 sample size with 10 to 15 indicators. Errors should be uncorrelated. All the error terms have the assumptions of being uncorrelated with the other variable errors. SAM uses the interval data set. The difference between variance-based modeling and the covariance-based modeling is the objective in case of variance-based modeling is prediction-oriented, while in case of covariance, it is a parameter-oriented. The distribution we assume in variance-based modeling is we can have any distribution. It's a non-parametric, while in case of covariance-based modeling, it is a normal distribution which is required. The required sample size here is small, here it is large. Model complexity. Variance-based SEM can handle large models easily. Here, large models can be the problematic. 
parameter estimates potentially biased because we are not assuming the normal distribution. Here, the parameter estimates are stable. Indicators per construct. One or two can also work in case of variance-based modeling. Large number is okay. In case of covariance-based SAM, it is essential that, at, that each construct should have minimum three to four indicators. Less than that can create a problem of degree of freedom. Statistical test for parameter estimates. Inference requires jet knifing or bootstrapping. Here, not necessary. Assumptions must be met. The measurement model. Uh, we can have a for, we can work on formative and reflective indicators in case of variance based SAM. In case of covariance based, we can only work on reflective indicators. Goodness of fit here we are having none. Here we are having many. The scale of measurement. The data can be captured on nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale, and the ratio scale. Out of this four level, if either dependent or independent variable is on interval scale, then we have to use the structural equation modeling. The example of the interval scale is a Likert scale. Now let's try to understand this flow chart. Structural equation modeling, we are having one endogenous variables and the observed variable, we are having one one exogenous observed variable, we will be using simple regression. More than one exogenous variables are there, we will be using multiple regression. Set, we are having two or more endogenous variable, observed variable. We want to study the relationship between exogenous to endogenous, we will be using multivariate regression. Endogenous to endogenous path analysis. Two or more endogenous variables are there and we are having latent variables where we want to Study latent to observed variable, the relationship of latent to observed variables. Then we are going for the factor analysis. Latent to latent, then we go for structural regression. We are having scales to measure height, weight, and the liquid. But in case of social science, our problem is to measure attitudes, beliefs, perceptions, opinions, and feelings of the people. Let's see. We want to assess the performance of the football team. This we can uh, do with the help of the performance of our football players. That is, say for example, four players are there. Performance of Joe, Sue, Mark and Dennis will give us the overall performance of the football team. Similarly, in our research also, we are having constructs like loyalty and satisfaction, which we cannot measure directly. This we are capturing with the help of some statements S1, S2, S3 and S4. You can see here 1, 2, 3 and 4. The opinion, the perceptions of the respondents are captured on 5 point Likert scale. Strongly disagree, disagree, undecided, agree and strongly agree. In this scenario, we are using the structural equation modeling. In SAM, variables are divided into two main part types, latent variables, which you can see on your right hand side. So loyalty is the latent variable. This latent variable, also known as a construct, you will never find this thing or rather you should never put this construct on the questionnaire. On questionnaire, what will appear is your observed variables, the statements S1, S2, S3 and S4. Latent variables are the constructs that are not directly measured or observable but are inferred from the multiple observed variables. Observed variables on the other hand are me directly measured or observed. S1, S2, S3, S4 are the observed variables. Loyalty is a latent variable. The relationship between variables in SAM are represented using the path diagrams. Say for example, loyalty is captured with the help of four statements. Similarly, the performance of an employee is captured with the help of four statements. We want to study the effect of loyalty on the performance. This is, this is the path diagram. These diagrams usually depict the relationship among latent variables and the observed variables in the form of arrows, which indicates the direction of influence, which we have earlier talked about on this, cause and effect. The sequence should be there. The arrows represents 
the hypothesized causal relationship between the variables. Advantages of using the structural equation modeling. It is used for theory development and the testing. To examine the complex relationship, we can integrate measurement and structure model very easily. For handling the latent variables, for model testing and modification, for handling the missing data, and for carrying out the multi group analysis and the inference testing. Say, for example, we want to test is a model significantly different in male or female or not, or according to the age group. So, here we are doing the invariance testing. Determining the sample size. Determining the minimum sample size required for structural equation modeling can vary depending on several factors, such as complexity of the model, the number of observed and the latent variables, the desired statistical power, and the desired level of accuracy. Here are some citations for the minimum sample size required. Herr et al. recommended a minimum sample size of 200 to 300 cases for SAM analysis. Klein 2016 suggests that for simple models with a small number of latent variables and observed variables, a minimum sample size of 100 to 200 cases may be sufficient. Bandler and Chow suggest that a minimum sample size of 200 cases is needed for SAM analysis. Specifically, Klein 2015 recommended that the ratio n is to q should be 22 to 1 or 20 observations for each estimated parameter in the model. That is, for one statement, the minimum sample size is 20. So, if you are having 10 statements, 200 sample size. Others have suggested that the n is to q ratios can be as low as 10 to 1 or 5 to 1. Clearly, there is a lot of variance and uncertainty even in the guidelines proposed by SAM scholars. The difference between the measurement model and the structural model. The measurement model in SAM deals with the relationship between the latent variable and the observed indicators, addressing how well the observed variables measure the underlying construct. It focuses on the measurement aspect of the model. The structural model in SAM deals with the relationship between the latent variables themselves addressing the causal and indirect aspects of the model. It captures the direct and indirect effects, mediating and moderating relationship among the latent variables. The measurement model handles the measurement part, whereas the structural model handles the causal relationship among the latent variables. Together, they form the complete SAM framework for analyzing the complex relationship between the variables. Let's try to understand the difference between the measurement model and the structural model by this slide. When you are trying, uh, when you are studying the relationship between the latent variable and the observed variable, this one, it is known as a measurement model. But when we are trying to study the relationship between construct to construct, latent variable to the latent variable, then it is known as a structural model. Measurement model is also known as an outer model. Structural model is also known as an inner model. Let's try to understand this thing. We are trying to study the performance. We are trying to assess the performance of the football team. So this is done with the help of performance of Joe, Sue, Mark and Dennis. But it is not possible that they will not commit the mistake. So the mistake committed by Joe is M1. M2, M3, and M4. So the same thing happens in our model also. When we are capturing loyalty with the help of some statements, S1, S2, S3, S4, there will be an error E1, E2, E3, E4. This error is known as a measured error. The measured error is estimated as a part of the SAM analysis and is typically represented by the error terms or residuals associated with the each observed variable in the model. These error terms capture the extent to which the observed variables deviate from the predicted values based on the latent constructs. If variance of S1 is 73%, it means that S1 is able to explain loyalty 73% here. S1 is able to explain loyalty 73%. Remaining unaccounted variance goes to the error E1, that is 27%. 
Now let's understand that if the loyalty which is captured with the help of four statements S1, S2, S3 and S4 and the performance which is captured with the help of four statements T1, T2, T3 and T4. We are trying to understand the difference between the measured error and the residual error. So we want to see the effect of loyalty on the performance of the employee. The overall error in the model is represented by the by E1. So this is known as the residual error in the model. Residual error is a specific to the structural model in SEP. It represents the path of the dependent variable that is not accounted for by the independent variable in the model. Or in other words, the unexplained component of this performance is the is E1. So what are the stages of SEM? The first stage is defining the individual construct. What items are to be used as a measured variable? Step stage two, develop and specify the measurement model. Stage three, designing a study to produce the empirical result. Stage four, assessing the measurement model validity. validity. Is the model valid? Yes. Proceed to test the structural model with stages 5 and 6. If the measurement model is not valid, refine the measures and design a new study. Stage 5. Specify the structural model. Assess the structural model validity with the help of goodness of fit uh, and significance, direction and size of structural parameter estimates. Is your structural model valid? Yes. Draw the substantive conclusions and recommendations. If it is not valid, refine the model and test with the new data. So this is all about structural equation modeling. You can refer my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos on structural equation modeling using IBM SPSS MS. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the like button.